Hi everybody, this is Pat Hogarty. What I want to do in the next few minutes is give you a demonstration of how to utilize the FTP program or the uh, File Transport Transfer Program on the Linux appliance that I provided for you. This is fairly simple to do. What I've done ahead of time just to make things go a little bit quicker is I've created a file using the, uh, if you will, it's the application that's under OpenOffice called the uh, OpenOffice Word Processor Program. I've used that application to create, and this is like a Microsoft Word, if you will, uh, to, create an uh, to create a file that I can then save and uh, you should demonstrate to you how to transfer it to the server at the college. So that's the program that I'm using. So uh, right up here I have the program or the file that I created. I saved it to the desktop. I called it CISC dash three two four dash FTP dash demo and it doesn't make any difference what I call it it could be any uh, file in fact this could be any file that you've created on your on your uh, on your appliance if you will this just happens to be a file and has an ODT which is the extension for the word processing program in OpenOffice now to start up the FTP program is fairly simple you just go up to places you go down to connect to a server and then you get to be presented with this box right here. Now this is some critical information in here that you need to put in correctly. It's not difficult, it's just that you want to put it in right so that you won't be pulling your hair out, if you will. First thing you need to do is drop this drop-down box and select SSH, which is Secure Shell. The next thing you need to do is make sure you're putting in the server, which is CIS dot scc dot l o s r i o s dot e d u which is the one you've been using all along to connect to the Linux server at the college then this is another important piece of information which is the port number you need to put 22 and then finally you put in your login your username which uh, all of us have the same one to begin with, which is CISC32X, and then of course after that it's your student number. In my case, it's an employee ID number, W1234217. Now once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and click Connect, and I'm going to be prompted for a password. So I'm going to put in a password, whatever password you've normally used. So I'll put mine in. And I just connect click connect and what's going to happen is uh, one thing I'm going to do before I go any further because this looks a little bit confusing over here this is just that the op when you when you establish an instance of opening up something like a um, like a remote server it actually puts if you will kind of like a shortcut on your desktop so what I'm going to do in order to correct that is that I can either drag this down like this or I could have went right click and just said organize desktop by name and it would have organized them so that's why it looks a little bit funny over here it works the same thing as Microsoft Windows does anyway I just wanted to clear that up now over here what you're going to do is see is a series of file folders I can tell what I'm logged into because this is what I'm cl clicked on right here and what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a file folder called home now if you remember if you've ever logged on to the root directory of your appliance or whatever you notice you'll see all of these directories in here your mount and your sbin and all that what we're looking for here on the server is the home directory so I'll double click on that and then it's going to open up another series of folders here some of them are going to buy people's name uh, these sometimes are teachers at the college or whatever in our case ours is CISC 32x so that's the whole folder for all of the students in this class currently so I'll double click on this and what you're going to see is a series of file folders and this is all going to be organized by student numbers so you'll look down through here and you'll find your student number with the W in front of it and that'll be your home folder so I'm going to just open up mine so I just go ahead and double click on this and now I can see that I'm in my public folder now one thing you're going to say is where's all of you know Pat Hogarty's files well every semester the network administrator creates a brand new account for me so I really don't have anything in this particular account I have it in another account that I normally use but what I'm going to do is what we want to do is be able to take a file that's on our desktop and drag it and put it over here and there's a number of ways that we can do it I'm going to show you one of the ways but again there are many ways that we can do it I'm going to go up here to view 
and I'm going to go down here to an extra pane. And what an extra pane is going to do is it's going to put a pane over here, and this pane that's grayed out is the one that's not active right now. Uh, whereas this one is active. So what I kind of want to do is I want to get these panes arranged so that I can pull my file from here and put it over here. So right now what I'm going to do is take this particular folder right here and I'm going to go up. This is active so when I click on it you'll see that it, it turns white which means it's active. So I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to click on desktop. Now on desktop I can see that my file is uh, on my desktop is shown right here. And then this is the server uh, file that I have. And all I really have to do to transfer the file is just left click on it, drag it, and drop it. And what's going to happen is now you see the file is located on the server. And it's really not any more complicated than that. Um, for the purposes of our demo, you're going to be doing this for two reasons. One is, uh, unless you have another method where you've put your, uh, uh, your public, uh, your three files that are for chapter 9 over here. You just want to make sure you put them in the right folder. And the other thing is on the document that I said you where I said I want you to demonstrate to me how you are able to take a file, create it, and transfer it to the server. Well I've just shown you how to do that. So uh, when it comes time for the hands-on final when I say I'm transfer to the server at the college, this is what I'm talking about. So again, you probably want to practice this a number of times, get familiar with it. This is typically the way uh, uh, you would transfer files. A good example of this would be when you're doing a website and you have files on your computer and you want to put them up on your website. This is how you transfer the files back and forth. So with that, I think this provides a really quick demonstration overview of how you do this. And we'll see you in class tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for watching.